OK. So I uh, would like to request one of us to lead in a word of prayer. Anyone? I see only a John and Aradhana have joined so far. So one of you maybe, and then we will. Sure, Pastor. Sure. Yeah. Father, we thank you for this morning. We pray that today you would speak to us and help us to understand your word in a, in a, in a better way, Lord Jesus. We submit Pastor Nancy to your hands, anoint her with your word, O oh God. And we pray that this session would be beneficial for us in every way, Lord Jesus. Help us to understand the authority that you have given us and help us to walk in that, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yeah. Thank you, John. So uh, in the last class, we saw how, um, you know, we, we saw the origin of Satan. We saw uh, the angel Lucifer who rebelled against God and who took one third of the angels and he was a throne, he was cast out of heaven. Uh, and we also know, you know, how um, he has now established a structure uh, to, to continue to interfere with the affairs of man here on the earth. Uh, we saw how originally as an angel, Lucifer was created for worship. He was uh, so perfect. He was uh, well-versed in several things. He was beautiful. Uh, he had wisdom. Uh, and, you know, he was anointed. And, and so many uh, marvelous things about uh, Lucifer. But then, you know, his, his deception and the deception that came through pride caused his downfall. Uh, we recognized that this enemy... Right? This enemy uh, is someone who uh, we cannot ignore. We have to acknowledge this enemy. But at the same time, the um, consciousness of this enemy you know, shouldn't become too much. You know, we shouldn't be overly uh, uh, involved, overly concerned about the enemy as well. So... These are all things that we have understood. We also, uh, from the first few chap first chapter of uh, uh, Believer's Authority, we understood that man is originally the one who has rulership here on the earth and man is supposed to be a representative of God, uh, not just uh, you know, in, in the kind of nature that man carries, but also the authority that man carries. So you know, we, we studied about power. We talked about you know, delegated authority, exousia. We uh, talked about dunamis, right? The, the, uh, like the supernatural power of God, which is at work on all of this uh, uh, has been redeemed. You know, man originally had it. He lost it in the fall. Uh, but then, you know, uh, the Lord Jesus became our sacrifice on the cross and he bought it back for us. So these are all some of the concepts that we have understood. Now we are going to move forward from there. Uh, and today, once again, you know, we, we are going to touch on the nature of Satan, the nature of demons. And this is just for our understanding. All right. So that's what we are going to look at. Now coming to the very first thing, we have... You know, this curiosity about demons and what we wonder, you know, what are, who are demons? Uh, uh, what is their intrinsic nature? And these are questions that we carry. So demons are disembodied spirits. Okay. What are demons? Demons are disembodied spirits. Now, Matthew chapter 12, uh, verses 43 and 45. I think it will be good if one of us can read it. And uh, from there, we can move forward. So Matthew 12, 43 and 43 to 45. Can one of us read it, please? Now, when the unclean spirit goes out a man, out of a man, it passes through waterless places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds it unoccupied, swept and put in order. Then it goes and takes along with it 
seven other spirits more wicked than itself and they go in and leave there and the last state of that man becomes worse than the first that is the way it will also be with this evil generation yes yes so uh, thank you john here uh, it's quite clear that demons that occupied an individual when they are cast out okay what do they do they are out for a while but they are seeking another place of habitation or they are looking for a dwelling place and that is why we call them as this embodied meaning they don't have a body of their own they are this embodied they are spirits okay they are spirits so they go around looking for a place to dwell in now if you recall the story of the uh, the possessed man of gadarenes uh, uh, he was also you know completely uh, possessed by the legion okay legion is many 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 spirits dwelt in him now if you go back to that story you see, you see even there that they were dwelling in a human being and when the lord jesus wanted to cast these spirits out what happened but they asked him to uh, send them into pigs because they needed a place to dwell in so you know you see there that they are looking for a place to live in generally these are bodies so human beings uh, are a good you know dwelling place for these spirits uh, animals we saw how they were cast into pigs so um, demon spirits can possess animals as well okay and when we began our class we also saw how uh, there can be spaces there can be things okay? there can be certain objects and that is why uh, uh, all of this will be very helpful when we are ministering deliverance to people you know there are sometimes you find uh, uh, some small objects um, uh, some charms you know things uh, amulets people have something tied on their hands there there are things that people carry uh, or keep in their homes right you go you travel somewhere and you pick up something you bring that uh, bring that for us it could be an object of uh, uh, interest it could be an object of art maybe a painting we bring it back with us and we keep it in our homes but if at all you no know, those not all objects you know not every object is uh, is uh, uh, carries demons in it that's not what i'm saying but you know there are certain objects we it's quite obvious that uh, it was part of a ritual or something like that so people bring back such objects and they keep it in their homes but we know that demons attach themselves even to objects okay so that is how demons really work and that is the reason we call them disembodied spirits why spirits you know lucifer he was cast out of heaven with one third of the angels so essentially these spirits are those rebellious angels and what are angels angels are spirits they are spirit beings okay they are spirit beings they are not like human beings human beings what's the difference you know we have a body what about these these demon spirits they don't have bodies but they are looking for a body it can be a living person it can be a, a an animal it can be objects it can be spaces they are disembodied spirits so that is the description of uh, demons okay so uh, animals people or inanimate objects now another thing that we can understand about uh, demon spirits is that they have an hierarchy okay any of uh, us who understand uh, the army or the navy or you know uh, the air force you generally have hierarchy there you have um, uh, uh, um, 
you know somebody who starts off as a jawan and then you know uh, maybe they they go on to becoming uh, something else so you know, they move up the ranks you have uh, ranks like a colonel la, you know you have uh, lieutenant you have a uh, major general so you have all those ranks isn't it in in the armed forces and similarly when you look at the kingdom of satan you notice that there is an hierarchy could somebody please read from ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12 please ephesians 6 and verse 12 for our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers against the powers against the world forces of this darkness against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places yes thank you thank you john john was that nkjv ah but this is nasb ah that's what nasb okay great so uh, can someone read from nkjv please for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places hmm okay yeah so uh thanks john and uh, uh, zeli toli you know in in both of um, the versions that you read it's quite clear there are different kinds of spirits engaged in different kinds of activities uh, it's a little more clearer in the nkjv version and that's why you know i i asked for that to be read so in the nkjv version the terms that are used would be principalities okay principalities refers to the chief rulers so in the hierarchy you know if you have like a major uh, you know a major major general they rule over an entire army of uh, you know different sections of of uh, soldiers uh, in the same way you have the principalities or the chief rulers who rule over uh, great forces of demons okay so you have principalities you also have something known as powers powers would be if you go back to the root word exousia huh? do you remember we said exousia refers to delegated authority so there is authority granted okay to certain classes of demons they are your powers powers delegated authority demonic authorities okay so you have principalities powers rulers of darkness rulers of darkness this is another section of demon spirits that are ruling spirits okay ruling spirits over regions of darkness and then you have spirits of wickedness again these are to do with uh promoting wickedness so you have certain spirits that promote wicked activities so this is for us you know a simple basic understanding of the the kinds of uh levels of demonic spirits that exists and um you know the spiritual atmosphere that surrounds the earth okay so spirits of these kinds engage with the earth with the people in the earth and you know they interfere with the purposes of god they interfere with the the original intent of god and which is why you know we are saying that this earth is a battleground for us to think that yeah we can just you know coolly slide through life and um very easily accomplish god's purposes not happening because there is a very real opposition that man has and that is satan and his demonic authorities 
So for us, why are we even trying to talk about this? You know, some people get scared and they say, no, we are believers. Jesus has already overcome uh, the enemy and every demonic spirit. Now don't talk too much about, you know, demon spirits. We don't need to talk about it. But, you know, if we don't understand how they operate, then how can we take our position against them? You know, that is the reason why we're talking about demonic spirits and trying to understand them. Okay, so that is why. So there's no need to get worried or get scared. Oh, no, I really don't want to talk about demons. No, let's let's have uh, knowledge and let's have wisdom. Use that knowledge against the enemy. Okay, so we've understood now. Okay, there are many levels of demonic authorities uh, and they function in an orderly way. We, we got that. Now, let's try and understand a little bit more about these demonic spirits. You know, we notice that these demonic spirits are somewhat specialized. Okay. So, specialized meaning when you go to the hospital, if, excuse me, if your condition uh, requires special attention, then you would look for a doctor that deals with uh, you know, that system of, of your body. For example, uh, if I have an issue with my ear, I'll go to the EMT doctor. Or if I have a specific issue with my heart, I'll go to the cardiologist. Okay, So like that, when you look at the demonic kingdom and the way the spirits function, they're very specialized. And that is why you know, you hear terms like spirit of infirmity. You know, the task of that spirit is to bring sickness, uh, infirmity upon a person. Or you hear things like um, mute spirit. You know, uh, 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 you hear things like unclean spirit, seducing spirit. So what do they do? They have a role to play, and that's exactly what they do. You know, uh, blind spirit of blindness. Maybe it's just bringing blindness over a person, or you know, a, a, a spirit of um, what can you say, a foul spirit. So you have all these names to indicate the activity of that particular spirit. So they also seem to have what we term as a personality. They have a personality and a name. You know, if you recall, when Jesus, he uh, casts out that legion spirit, he says, okay, who are you? And they say, oh, we are legion. There are many spirits within this man. So they have a personality and they have a name. Okay, This is just for our understanding. Now, we'll also see later on that it's not to um, engage, you know, when we're casting out demons. Some people get very caught up in, you know, what kind of a spirit is it? Who are you? And all that. But, you know, if it is helpful in casting that spirit out, then you go ahead and do your research of finding out what spirit are you uh, and, uh, you know, more details on that. But it may not be necessary at all times. But it's enough for us to know that, Demon spirits have a personality, they have a name, they have a specialization. So this helps us. For example, if I am ministering to somebody, maybe uh, uh, insanity, they, this person is acting weird and all that. And as you're praying for this individual, you realize that this is not a physical condition that the person has, but it is a demon spirit. When you cast out the spirit of insanity, what happens? The person is able to think better. Okay. So it is helpful in that sense. Mute spirit or the, this spirit or that spirit. You know that once you cast out that spirit, the person will be able to function better, better in that area. Okay. So that is how it really helps us to know these things. So demon spirits can be very specialized and have a particular activity that they are engaging in. They can also be territorial. Okay, Territorial. Now, if uh, some of you have pets, you understand what I mean, isn't it? Uh, like, you know, if you have a dog, then that dog establishes that um, uh, like, you know, territorial authority 
over the place and it wouldn't want any other dog to come into your home into your campus because it has established its territorial authority over that place and similarly you find that demon spirits have territorial authority over places they rule and reign over certain regions now how do they gain access over those regions we have seen you know engaging the spirit world maybe through rituals through sacrifices you know through certain practices people have engaged the spirit world and they have given that authority to the demon spirits over the region uh, and so you find that these demon spirits have territorial uh, authority and they rule and reign over a region now how does this you know help us as believers now, sometimes when you look at a certain place you recognize that no amount of uh, you know uh, logical research no amount of changing policy regulation uh, education none of that is really helping change the behavior of the people or the attitudes of the people maybe i'm not saying again don't use all this information to always come to the conclusion that something is demonic or you know that uh, everything is demonic everything has to do with demon spirits no if we are going to respond and react react like that we are wrong everything is not demonic okay however there can be uh, uh there can be outcomes that are due to demonic activity in a given region okay for example let's say uh, violence murder you find that in some regions there's a lot of this going on you know crimes are going on and the authorities are doing their best but crimes are not coming down it could have to do with you know territorial spirits that are instigating people there can be you know violence there can be prostitution you know, some places you find that there is just the government is doing their best ngos are doing their best but still something something is off okay what is this it could be a demonic stronghold you have territorial spirits that rule and reign over that region alcoholism right widespread alcoholism you know many such things over a given region and uh, uh, the one of the things that you can trace back to is demonic strongholds over that region and territorial spirits that have gained authority over that region so you know these are all things for us to understand so we are saying that demons have hierarchy they are specialized they have a personality they are also quite um uh you know attached to the regions where they dwell or they operate okay uh, they can also um uh, okay fine so this this is something that you know gives us a little bit of understanding uh, about the kingdom of darkness that is ruled by satan now we also know that satan is uh, the commander in chief of the kingdom of darkness so you have all these principalities rulers spirits of wickedness satan is the one who is commanding them and you know guiding them on how uh, and what needs to be done so in scripture we see that satan is also described with several names so what are all these names that are given to satan now satan uh, is called the adversary in first peter you remember the adversary um, uh, the the devil he is like a lion you know he's going about like a roaring lion is what we read so he is the adversary whose adversary is he he is god's adversary he is the adversary of mankind so he is in opposition to us right so these are all names that also help us understand the personality of satan he opposes us okay he is known as the enemy why because he is working against us he is working for our destruction 
So Satan is called as the enemy. I'm not taking us through every reference here because otherwise it'll take a lot of time, but you can look up the references. He's known as the adversary. He's known as the enemy. He is known as the slanderer. The slanderer is people who speak ill of, you know, another person. So Satan speaks ill of us. Now, if God says that you are a child of God, what did he do in the garden? He went against what did God really say? He will try to twist truth and speak against God's people. So he is a slanderer. He speaks all kinds of wicked things uh, about God's people, who we are in Christ Jesus. That is why it's so important for us to affirm who we are in Christ Jesus. Because if we don't, we can give in to the slander of the enemy. He speaks wild things about us, but we must speak what God says about us and declare who we are in Christ Jesus. Now, he is called as Satan. In many places, we see this name that is used. Um, so Satan is, is one of the names of Lucifer. We know his activity of causing He is termed as the old serpent. Does that mean he is a snake? Every snake is the devil? No. Okay. That's not uh, what it is. But, you know, in, in scripture, you have symbolism. So there are certain uh, characteristics of uh, an animal or, you know, uh, or, or, or a creature or an object which is used to describe describe the activity so you find that satan is termed as the old serpent uh, and uh, also the dragon now we can associate okay serpent dragon something harmful okay something uh, uh, that it, you know we're not comfortable with so these are all pictures symbolism so in the book of revelation 12 9 is where he's known as the dragon <laughs> excuse me he's also known as the deceiver now that's quite understandable if you go back to the garden of eden what he did was deception isn't it he told uh, eve if you have this fruit then you are going to be like god now that is you, you will have knowledge of good and evil. Now, maybe there is a certain element of truth in what he's saying, but invariably, if, you know, what, what he is communicating is a big lie. Now, Eve followed what uh, Satan said, you know, that serpent in the garden said, and what happened? Sin came into the world. There, there was like major consequence to the action of Adam and Eve. So what happened to them? They got deceived, isn't it? They went after something, but they got something completely different. And Satan continues to do that today. He is a deceiver. You know, he would say, ah, you will get pleasure out of this. Or, you know, you are, your life is going to be so much better if, if, you, if you get this object or you uh, you are friends with so and so and we're thinking that's the result we are going to get and we are heading in that direction but then you know the complete opposite happens and that is deception isn't it so we're getting some other results as compared to what we were promised and that is the work of satan and therefore satan is called as the deceiver he's also called as you know the adversary and the roaring lion now I told us that symbolism, that doesn't mean every line you see is Satan or demonic. No, it's a picture. Why? Because when we talk about a line, you know, if, if one is, even by mistake, your, your inner, uh, in a lion's den, what, what are the consequences? You know, that animal or that creature or that person, gets eaten up, right? So devoured. There's no mercy. Say, 
the the lion will just gobble you up so in the same way when you look at the personality of satan he has no mercy he's ready to destroy ready to kill right ready to devour and all these names mind you they are just giving you an idea of the personality of satan so you can understand how wicked you know this individual is satan adversary the old serpent cunning deceiver uh, the the roaring lion but these are all uh, terms to understand the personality of satan another name which is given is the tempter you remember even jesus he didn't spare jesus and you know, we read about uh, the life of jesus that he became a man to fully experience what it is to be like you and me and which is why scriptures tell us that jesus understands us he became that high priest who can sympathize with us even jesus was tempted you know to the extreme jesus was fasting 40 days and here goes satan you know giving him all kinds of ideas um you know if you worship me i will give you this world if you worship me i will make you the king so there is temptation coming in right he is the tempter now was jesus tempted in every way scripture says yes every way all kinds of temptations and satan continues to do that in in our lives you know at every season in our lives there is temptation for money for popularity for pleasure for this for that and he's constantly trying to derail us okay trying to cause us to sin because what is temptation temptation is <laughs> excuse me temptation is you know him working on our minds to make us sin to draw us away from god okay and uh, that is satan's work uh, and and each one of us you know we do come under temptation in this world because that is the activity that our enemy is engaged in so tempter he is known as the tempter also uh, you know he is known as the accuser accuser of the brethren you know once again i i told that uh, he is the uh, adversary he speaks opposite to what god speaks uh, and uh, you know he is the deceiver he will deceive us um, by by saying all kinds of things now accuser we have to be so firm in who we are in christ jesus otherwise what happens you know he'll put thoughts in our hearts and he say oh you're so bad you're so evil you think you can serve god what makes you think you can serve god you know what makes you think you are you are holy what makes you think you can go into god's presence what makes you think that god will hear your prayer what is all this it's accusing us it's it is accusing us uh, with false you know false things god is saying that we are washed by the blood of jesus you know god is saying that i am a child of god god is saying you know he has good plans for me he he has a good future for me so but satan will come and he will he will put those wrong thoughts and he'll say oh really no you think you're good enough for god to bless you you think you're so his constant work is accusing putting us down and saying the opposite of what god says about us and that is once again you know a, a, a good good thing for us to know because every time we have thoughts like this we have to bring ourselves back and say no you know i know that god is for me god is for me who can be against me you know we go against the accusations of the enemy against us so that is his nature and you sometimes we find ourselves with these accusations in our minds and we can immediately pick it up and say no this is not from god this is not the word of god and i am just going to go by what god says about me so satan he is an accuser he's also the god of this world okay we are told and uh, god of this world meaning small god obviously remember we we uh, we brought that understanding and we said that it's only our god 
no uh, uh, who is the creator of this world and satan is but a finite created being so he can't be a god in that sense but to uh, express that he is the ruler of this world the term small g god of this world is used so he has you know for now for the time being uh, he does have a stake he is uh, you know manipulating and going about doing things here in the world causing destruction so in that sense he is the god of what the universe no only of the world or the earth for right now he is also termed as the prince of <laughs> excuse me he is also termed as the prince of the air the prince of the air so what do we understand by that you see this is uh, when when we talk about uh, all these principalities you know powers of darkness uh, spirits of wickedness many a time we have this understanding that they are in a realm okay they are in a spiritual realm um, they are in an atmosphere sometimes people use that term the atmos they are in an atmosphere surrounding the earth um and, and so to to kind of uh, kind of um uh, describe that you know we use prince of the air so he is the ruler of that atmosphere that consists of uh, the hierarchy and the structure of the demonic kingdom so he is known as the prince of the air uh, he is known as the angel of light okay angel of light again this is the same as a deceiver angel of light is as if uh, you know he appears as if he is bringing us the truth he appears as if he is doing us good you know he appears as if um, you know uh, he has come to to bring us uh, the the good message but obviously you know when you go with the word that he is speaking you end up deceived and that is why he is also termed as the angel of light and uh, it, it, it's like a warning you know satan is the angel of light he may appear good but we have to be cautious and we have to um, discern that we must not go by his instructions to us so the angel of light he is also known as beelzebub okay beelzebub in scripture beelzebub is um, the exact translation of that is the lord of dung you know cow dung the the lord of dung or the lord of filth the lord of flies okay now uh, it, it's not pleasant at all it's it's very disturbing isn't it to know that there is a the lord of sort of garbage okay uh, and the lord of the flies where do flies come flies come when uh, i'm just giving you an example let's say for example there are flies where we live and uh, we've left some food on uh, our plates and we've not cleared it for a very long time what can we expect the flies come and they kind of you know hover on the uh, the old food there satan he's not clean okay he's not about the truth he's not about goodness uh, he's not about uh, you know our welfare but it's all filth and wickedness and lies and you know uh, sin and things like that that he's attracted to so one of the things that we can take back from this is see the flies come where there is leftovers and uh, uh, you know a uh, filth but if you clear the filth there's no uh, there's no uh, requirement for a fly to come there isn't it so flies don't come to clean spaces generally or let's say sanitized spaces they generally don't come so in the same way when we keep our lives clean of sin you you get rid of sin uh, in your life you walk uh, righteously with god there's no door of entry for a fly or the uh, uh, the the demons of, of satan or satan to 
kind of show up and do their work in our lives. So Beelzebub is the lord of the flies, the lord of filth, the lord of dung. And that is another name which Satan has. He's attracted to places of sin and wickedness. Belial, okay, Belial is another name uh, which is given to Satan. And that means worthlessness, without profit, destructive, uh, so on and so forth. He's also called as the evil one or the wicked one. Okay, so evil or wicked is, uh, you know, we understand that when somebody is hurtful, we think, oh, that's so evil what that person has done, right? Sometimes you have these little kids, they're still growing up and they don't know what to say and they just say something rude. And you, you tell them, no, that's not right. What you said is very hurtful. Uh, but at least their intention is good. They didn't know that they're hurting somebody with their words. But think about Satan. He intends to hurt. You know, he intends to be uh, wicked. He intends to be evil. He wants to make sure that our spirits are broken. You know, our lives are destroyed. That God's purpose is not fulfilled in our lives. So uh, why are we trying to understand? You know, sometimes it makes us angry. When you read about Satan, you're like, I'm so angry that Satan is like this. You know, in a way, it's good to be angry because then it kind of uh, drives us to pursue God more, to pursue the truth of God's word more. And wherever Satan is working, right, in people's lives, we, we don't want that to happen, right? And I'm reminded of some preachers. Uh, now, don't go by their example. It's definitely not recommended. But, you know, people like Smith Wigglesworth, it's told that, uh, uh, th there was times in his ministry when he would minister and whenever he would see sick people come to him and there is one incident that I've heard that somebody came with a tumor okay and uh, he kind of uh, hit that tumor or something like that uh, and the tumor the person was actually healed the tumor you know came up came off uh, that person and that person was healed and all uh, but later when asked why are you so violent when you're ministering to people you, know, you can be gentle right so the, uh, the smith wigglesworth actually said i'm not angry with the person i'm angry with the sickness i'm angry with the devil you know i'm angry with what the enemy is doing the wickedness that you know the the enemy is showing on the lives of the people so but you know, obviously, uh, it's definitely not recommended to be hitting people and all that. But what I'm saying is, in the ministry of that person, there were results. People were healed. People were raised from the dead. The attitude that we can take back is to know that the, you know, it's said like, it's put like this. God is a good God. The devil is a bad devil. Okay. So the attitude we can keep with us is, yes, we are facing a bad enemy. Okay. So we have to stand on God's truth. We have to see the demonstration of God's power to see people set free in their lives. Right. So that is what we take back with us. But of course, you know, we know better now with scripture that we can't be rough. You know, we can't be rude and hurtful, physically hurtful to people when we are ministering to them. But the simple point is we can understand the enemy for who he is, you know, and it really helps us uh, <clears throat> fight the uh, enemy the way God teaches us to do it through his word. Okay, couple of other names. And uh, I think for this session, we can wrap up. Uh, he is known as a thief. Okay, thief. Because he doesn't do things rightfully. He trespasses. Meaning, when there are boundaries put, you know, we have our homes, you know, and we have our, uh, um, our uh, you know, walls around our home and the doors and the windows, they are shut. Anyone who accesses in a rightful way is part of the family or friends or you know they they are uh, they have the right to come inside the house but if somebody jumps into our uh, home late in the night what would we call that person 
thief because they are trespassing it's they don't have the right to do that but they're doing it that is a thief and that is who satan is and we have to catch him every time when he's trespassing against the promises of god in our lives we say come on satan you can't do that right so he acts like a thief he comes to and what what does a thief do it's never pleasant right steal kill destroy those are the activities that satan is engaged in when he trespasses against our lives he's also known as a murderer okay murderer so that's quite obvious uh, he's going what do we know about god god is the author of life zoe life the god kind of life right i've come that you may have life and have it in abundance so everything that has to do with life we associate with god he is a good god but satan what is one of his names he is a murderer he comes to kill right so you know we understand the activities of of the enemy so he leads us towards destruction he is also known as the father of lies what did jesus say i am the way the truth and the life what about satan he is the father of lies he is a murderer so you know it gives us a good picture of who this devil is what he is up to and what we must fight against okay and uh, uh, very mm, oh yeah i can't be quick here we are uh, we have stuff to understand and learn so uh, we almost through with our first session here the time is up so any thoughts any questions any additional comments from all of you we can uh, do that and then you know go for a break okay all right so uh, maybe you're uh, uh, thinking about what you have learned for now uh, that's all right uh, what we can do is we can go in for a break it is uh, 10:47 so let's come back at 10:57 uh, is that okay everyone 10 minutes okay wonderful okay i'm glad uh, you're enjoying the session uh, subhashish all right okay so uh, let's come back at uh, 1058 okay uh, we going on a break now see you soon thank you